Hello everyone. My name is Sri. I'm a director of Global Project Execution Program at ABB. And uh, thank you for stopping in to listen to our session on digital transformation and how this is changing the game for major capital projects. This session is a modified version of our conversation, which we had planned as part of our Saravi community earlier this year. And to stay connected in these difficult times, uh, we thought of sharing our insights on some key leadership thoughts, and we have decided to bring out our version of virtual Saravi. We hope you leave a comment to us on the recording or reach out to us to let us know if you have any thoughts on today's conversation. And with that, I'd like to introduce our speakers, Judd, uh, Managing Director of Upstream at IHS Market, and David Barnes, Senior Vice President of Sales and Marketing at ABB Energy Industries. Uh, welcome, Judd. David, welcome Thank again. You. Yeah. So, sure. Judd, uh, to start with, you know, can I ask in the discussions for us to share your views on changing oil and gas industry? And we see the industry is favoring uh, shorter project cycle barrels that offer more immediate returns and greater cap capital flexibility. You know, why is this, you know? Absolutely, Shri. And I guess first off is it, uh, really pleased to be here with you all today. And it's a great topic, a very timely one, and I'm really looking forward to the conversation. And, and I think, you know, if, if we look at what's taking place in the industry today, I, I think there's probably a few things going on. We're absolutely seeing a continuation of the, the capital constraints that have been placed in the industry. And so with that, we're looking to, the industry is looking to um, be able to design more capitally efficient projects and have more effective project execution as well to both bring down costs as well as uh, bring forward production. And I think one of the things that leads to that, that the comment that you were making is that we also begin to see this, this focus and uh, an emphasis on shorter cycle barrels and really things that can begin to have a return on capital much more quickly, as well as to have greater capital flexibility as well. And I think the last kind of one of the last changes that we see is that there, there's a real interest in some of the new operating models as well. Things that can, um, you know, some whether it's remote operations, whether it's um, greenhouse gas emissions management. So, you know, trying to do different things and work differently. And I, and I think, you know, all of these, you know, in summary, what we're beginning to see is that the industry is in a period of transition. Mm -hmm. And the expectation is that how we design and execute projects needs to be able to respond to some of these uh, increasing demands. Sure. Now, how do we see the design, you know, aspect of, you know, the requirements and the design aspect translate in a capital project and the needs of the customers being addressed? Um, you know, Dave, if you could some bring some light to that. Yeah, I think, you know, first reflecting on, on what Judd was saying, I think when we talk to investors, you know, whether they're, they're, they're global majors, whether they're regional players or, you know, single entity investors, there is, as, as Jed said, there's this ongoing theme around driving capital efficiencies and, and returns, better managing risk, and, and really how to drive in aspects or dimensions of you know, sustainability. And I think that, you know, th those are really key ongoing dimensions of, uh, of the discussions that we're having today. And then when we talk about, you know, transformation or how we design in these various you know capabilities then then that leads us to a real discussion around um, how do we better explore what how we can enable the future of the operations and the enterprise you know in these in these discussions right while still managing those those dimensions that are critical to the project uh, execution delivery uh, and we know that during the design phase we're going to have dimensions of these or excuse me the execute phase will have dimensions of value engineering where a lot of those early design features are are designed out, and so you know, I think what ends up being really critical critical is, particularly with the level of development that has been been delivered on on technology, mm -hmm. is that we really got to consider the people, and mm -hmm. how we manage the process so mm -hmm. that we prevent those dimensions that could uh, potentially negatively impact the outcome. And so early engagement around the design, the design outcomes desired for the facility uh, really ends up being a key to mention this. Good. Good. Yep, I agree. And now from a, again on a capital major project, um, how can project managers ensure the digital concepts and the technology enablement are embedded uh, during the early stages of a project you know, to achieve, as you said, the desired savings and the outcome from the beginning of the project. Uh, you know, how, how do we make sure that it's 
you know, it's the project managers have that. Yeah, and, and I think what we've, we've learned a lot over the last couple of years in transformation does begin with people. Um, and so you've really got to have a culture where transformation and, and change is, is, is driven. And I think often we think in terms of technology and those new technology capabilities, but those, again, those are only enablers. And so you really have to consider the interaction between all the various parties as you're working through the various dimensions of, of execution or, or change. And, and this becomes how do you manage through many of the you know, the transitions. And so to do this, we need to really uh, do a couple things. One is demystify some of those inherent capabilities or functionality of, of the technology. Um, and, and we have to bring those engineers, those project managers, construction managers, and other vendors really from, from the entirety of the, that organization that needs to deliver that outcome, uh, generally an, an engineered facility, we need them actively engaged in designing and implementing, but really we need to focus not on just how we've already done it or how we've done it in the past, but really how with today's capabilities, we have more of an adaptive execution and methodology. And I think to, to accomplish that, we've got to engage much earlier because again, it's change. Um, and I think in order to do that, you've got to really um, leverage early those investors and those key stakeholders that are going to be responsible for, for delivering so we understand um, how we manage through that to deliver that outcome. True, true. Jed, you have some views on this? Well, I do. And I think part of the good news is that we've really begun to see a change in behavior over the last few years. And I, and I think, you know, one of the, the aspects of this change is we're really beginning to see the engineering companies, as well as a number of the key suppliers, really beginning to view, um, I guess, technology in general um, to be one of the differentiators. And, and how that's playing out is that they're becoming much more proactive in bringing ideas to their customers and being much more proactive and kind of you know proposing uh, new solutions to to meet their objectives, and then the second is that they're, they're really focused on being best in class around execution, and you know being able to kind of bring the tools to bear that will allow them to do that and just be able to you know significantly improve project execution efficiency as well as to reduce cycle time as well. Yeah. And one of the things I know one of the themes that we're talking about here is that digitalization tends to play a role in both of those especially as you begin to have more complex asset types, being able to have transparency of data and information across them uh, plays a big role. And then also on the execution side as well, making sure that the handoffs are, are done correctly, uh, you know, which is both a organizational workflow, but having the right tools to be able to do that is absolutely critical. And, and the industry is making strides. I wouldn't say that we're, you know, you know not where we want to be quite yet, but, but we certainly see progress and we certainly see a change of interest and change of behavior over the last few years than probably we did previous to that. Yeah. Sure, sure, sure. Great. And now, you know, kind of when we move from design to execute stage of a project, you know, how do we see applying principles of agile in project execution process? You know, and what does it really mean in terms of getting into improving the project value? Right. Um, Judd, maybe you can take first. Yeah, I'll look, you know, so agile de development, I, I think it's a, it's certainly a, a new um, way of approaching things and it's, it's, you know, gotten a lot of uh, interest, level of interest over the last uh, few years. Uh, and I think it's a ch change in behavior. I, I think it's, it's working differently. It's a change of, you know, kind of mindset in terms of how you work to be able to deliver these. And I think, you know, part of that is, is making sure that you have the coordination across all the different parties as well, is that rather than working in isolation and doing handoffs and, you know, kind of working, it's that, having that agile and being able to engage between um, the, the customer or the engineering company and the, then the ABBs of the world as well. I mean, especially I mentioned we're in a period of transition is that it's really critical that uh, we see the role of the automation control um, contractors and suppliers to be really critical when you're beginning to transition. And, and I think that that part of the, the project is is going to be essential here. So the engagement, I think, across all the different parties is really is really key. Yeah. Yeah, I, and I really, I'd like to say, you know, I really agree with, with what Judd has just said, and, and really how he's how he's really phrased that, because I think, you know, if you look at as an example how ABB looks at how we're designed, our, you know, our modern execution processes, it's really around very agile and adaptive methodologies, and that provides this structure, a systematic focus, 
um, that we use and with this dimension of continuous improvement, uh, we're able to constantly improve strategies. We're able to learn from the knowledge we gain from past decisions and past activities, and we implement those, again, in this more you know, adaptive, flexible, uh, agile uh, capabilities. And that really becomes the foundation for, you know, for how we succeed. And I think, you know, I'd say in my, you know, my personal opinion that, you know, we here at ABB have really taken a focus. We've got this, this unique um, opportunity in, in the breadth of infrastructure that, that we have and, you know, the, the R&D that we are allowed to, therefore, you know, deliver. Um, and that allows us when we're in these early design phases to focus on the methodology, but the inclusion of these um, technologies in the methodology and then the management KPIs around the methodology so we can control or at least observe the behaviors. And when we see things, uh, the dimensions that f creep into every one of these projects, again, value engineering or uh, preferential engineering or the way we've always do things, those dynamics, as they creep in, we can um, put in place processes that identify those and allow us to at least take a time out and say, is this what we really want to do? It could impact that future. Is that the decision that the company wants to make? Or do we want to stay the course as to what the design and the methodology was agreed to? That's right. Okay. Yep. Agreed. Now, when we you know, work on major capital projects, one of the key things is also what we have to look at from is an OPEX or a life cycle value standpoint, where how do we bring in the technology uh, into the operation phase and how can we enable a smoother, you know, successful project commissioning digital handoff, you know, kind of. So if you could touch upon on that. Yeah, I think, you know, there's, um, this is really one of the dimensions I think where, where the digitization um, initiatives are, are really going to reap benefit. And, and, and in, you know, as I see it, you know, digitization is really around how do we free data from all of these silos, whether it's the, you know, the asset, whether it's the, you know, the project delivery uh, and execution phase, um, whether it is a functional silo, um, process engineers or, or controls or electrification or risk management or whatever it might be. How do we free this data up and then leverage it with today's capabilities or capabilities that can be developed so that we take that data and we utilize it for the preparation of the operations facility and really deliver not just a facility that can operate, but a facility that meets through a digital handover the operational needs so that the operation therefore is operating from day one very effectively, very efficiently, without having to post shakedown and commission or during shakedown and commission have additional engineering and, and cost expense that then runs up the, the operational cost or the OPEX cost for that facility. And if we design it correctly, you know, in the very early stages, then we can have uh, platforms and architectures and systems that are very sustainable, built on standardization that are easier, much more cost effective to maintain. And I think really that's um, one of the gifts that I that this digitization that we're now talking about can really bring to the to the market, one of the benefits for our for the marketplace. Sure, sure. And lastly, I would say, you know, from a from a major capital projects today with the schedule constraints and the complexity involved and with multiple players in the game, you know, we are talking about a lot of people from different businesses, different disciplines coming together and working on these projects. And how do we, you know, align and collaborate with multiple players on such a project? And as an automation digital sub solution provider, how do you see us contributing towards and ensuring that the projects are successfully done? Yeah, I think in the past it was, you know, communication, communication, communication. But really, I think today it's collaboration, collaboration, collaboration. And I think, you know, we again, we have to eliminate some of the historical dimensions of, you know, of distance that have um, impaired the the successful collaboration um, or or other facets, time, uh, time of day, things of that nature that can that that uh, impact the the engineering, the execution, or really this ability for parties around the world, depending on uh, whether they're their vendor, whether they're an engineering firm, whether they're a supplier, a, the end user, whoever they might be, subject matter experts. Um, and really the, the, the platforms that have matured and are available now are these cloud engineering platforms. And so when you have 
really have available uh, cloud enabled engineering environments, then you can eliminate uh, many, many of those traditional barriers um, that have influenced and negatively influenced, generally speaking, um, to the comment that, that, that Judd made, those dimensions of you know, capital efficiency or, or time that uh, tend to really be burdensome to, to these projects. Um, and I don't know, Judd, do you, do you see it any, yep. any, any differently? Yeah, I mean, I think technology certainly plays a role. And I think all the things that you mentioned are going to be critical to breaking down some of the barriers. Um, and, I, and I think a different mindset, a different culture. And I think the, the industry is, you know, there's nothing like a good crisis to uh, to force mindset. But but I think one last thing, and we, one thing that we, we truly believe in is that in some cases, it's it needs to be contractual in nature as well. Yeah. It needs to be a different relationship between the suppliers. And in some cases, the automation control companies need to be elevated um, to more of a, a primary uh, supplier as well. So, you know, I, I think you know, technology, organization, mindset, but I think in some cases it does come down to actually imposing some contractual, you know, demands on, on how it happens. And we see real change. We, when that's happened, we actually have seen real change that are kind of uh, being kind of working their way through the projects. Sure. Yeah, I think that's really a great point, Jed, and I appreciate that 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 comment. I think that's that's really such a fundamental piece of the how do you manage the transformation that um, the relevance of that is strong. Yeah, so really. Yeah. Great, great. So again, thank you. Thank you very much, Judd and David. Um, you know, this time what we have for the, having this short conversation uh, for this virtual Sarah week. Uh, again, thank you and glad that you could join us today uh, for this studio discussion. And uh, for the people watching us, thank you. Uh, please reach out to us if you have any questions. Uh, and, you know, if you want to, you know, have any discussions further on this and see you next time. Thank you. Thank you.